He's uh, Joe Buck, lead play-by-play voice for Fox Sports, NFL, baseball, and uh, he's got a game this Saturday. He's got the Yankees and the Nationals. Joe, kind enough to join us. What kind of hijinks did you get into when you were growing up? I never egged anybody. I felt like that would come back on us and bring shame upon my father. So I I didn't think that was a good thing to do. I will say that uh, you might want to investigate me in this whole caper because for some reason, Todd keeps texting my wife. I don't know if you know that, but Todd cannot, for some reason, differentiate my number from my wife's number. And so periodically, my wife would go, that guy's texting me. Who is this guy? I mean, I don't want to pop his bubble. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident, Joe? A coincidence? I, no, I don't. Okay, I don't. It's not. I think he's fallen in love with her from Celebrity Watch Party and her time at ESPN. And now I finally took matters into my own hands and egged his house. Todd, you want to respond? It's very possible that uh, Joe may have egged my house because I have both numbers stored under Joe's name, and I guess when I'm sending it, it's going to the wrong place. And I've done this like several times now. You think I would have gotten years figured out? Years. Joe's been married for a while. I know. But I don't get it. But but it's not that hard. It's not. Do you do this to to your other guests' spouses? Very rarely. (laughs) (laughs) Did you did you have uh, fans show up at your house to meet your dad? growing up um yeah but you know the funny thing was uh, my dad was so open with that that wherever we were if we were at dinner and we hadn't seen him in two weeks and it's like oh dad's home we're all going to dinner and then we'd sit down at this italian restaurant every time canetto's in st louis and uh somebody would come up to the table and he would pull out a chair and go sit on down <laughs> tell me about your life and he, then he got like johnny from Paducah, kentucky going well i grew up uh in the uh, 50s and yeah so i we they didn't need to come to our house is my point at the grocery store at restaurants it didn't matter they everybody was his friend i'm wondering what you took away from the broadcast last night are you watching as a broadcaster or or can you just watch as a fan? No, I'm, I'm watching these days as a broadcaster. I don't typically do that, uh, but I think when I have tomorrow night on the horizon and I'm going to be in a studio in Denver, Smoltz is going to be in a studio in Jersey at MLB. Our producer, Pete Macheska, is going to be in L.A., so we're going to be all spread out. Um, I watched the game last night, and Matt and Alex were at least together in the studio but, you know, we're spread out all over the place, and John is is doing a bunch of games, so that's why he's at MLB. So in order to bring us together, it would have been ridiculous. So we're going to do a dry run today. We're going to see how it all works communication-wise, and then, and then we'll go do it. But I, I was practicing last night doing the game off the television, and uh, it's a little different seeing the ball come kind of at you instead of watching the ball go away, which is where we – you know, see it and sit during a regular game. But also when you're, you're going to call this game and we know, we know that it's kind of crazy times here, but how long do you think you're doing games before you're not really acknowledging the lack of ambiance there at a baseball game? Yeah, I kind of feel, and and maybe I'm wrong. I think on it, but I really don't want to beat that uh, drum too much tomorrow. I mean, at at some point, I think this becomes a nice distraction and something to theoretically bring people together and just constantly reminding everybody of everything that we've all been through in our own ways over the last four months. I think people are tuning into a game to get away from that. So I I don't, nobody cares that John and, uh, and I are not together. Nobody care. You know, I, I think they just want to watch the game. And and it's almost like announcer guy, okay, enough. Shut up. Just let me watch uh, Aaron Judge uh, try to get a hit off Steven Strasburg. Yeah, it, the feeling I got is give me the tutorial. If you want to give me a, a once around, a drive-by, and just say this is the setup, this is how it looks, and then that's it. After, you know, I just wanted to hear the game. I didn't want to hear, hey, this is weird for us to call the game, or hey, the sound or the cardboard cutouts. We want to get away. We want this. We we need this. And the less I think you dwell on it, I think uh, is the better approach, Joe. I agree. 
Yeah, I mean, we're doing the virtual fan thing, and and you know, obviously, everybody's going to weigh in, uh, and and some will like it, or most won't care yeah. because it just looks like a game. You know, the ones that are mad and stomping their feet will go on social media and stomp their feet. But I think trying to make it look and sound, this is entertainment too. Look and sound as normal and as it's always been is kind of our job. So if if we're constantly going, hey, all these people are fake, or hey, <laughs> we're coming back from every break and we see cardboard, sh- you know, still shots and moving shots of cardboard cutouts, I I think that defeats the purpose. That's why people are watching the ball game, in my opinion. And and I could I could be wrong. What about the uh, crowd noise? Are you pumping in crowd noise and to what extent yeah i think that's kind of a work in progress you know they're they're doing it in these stadiums and so typically our ambient mics just pick up what's in the stadium we're we're not adding anything so i think if that's sufficient if that's sufficient then we'll go with that but you know i was talking to our producer and whoever these stadiums employ to do these crowd noise tracks i I'm sure they don't care what it sounds like on TV or on Fox or whatever. Or if they do, you know, how good are they in each stadium? So if if it's not right and it seems weird, I, I think it's up to us to try to make it sound right and normal. Uh, it can't be a pop-up and everybody, you're, you're <laughs> playing a reaction like people are doing the wave and standing and screaming. It's a pop-up. What do you think of uh, extended playoffs here and that format for baseball? I, you know, to me, this was always the opportunity to have the test kit out there and see what works and what doesn't. Uh, I, I, I'm excited about a 60 game season. I know Smoltz is uh, just kind of the immediacy of it. And I, I, I really wanted to see even more. You know, if you're ever going to bring, bring a pitch clock in and see how that goes, they're doing the runner at second base and extra innings, which I like. Let's get it going. Let's let's find let's get a conclusion to this thing. Uh, and, and the same for the playoffs, you know, if, if all of a sudden they, they have this seating and people seem to latch onto it, I just think 2020 is its own thing. And, uh, going back to the drawing board next off season, they've got a, a new, uh, collective bargaining, uh, agreement to put together. And I, I think there's a lot of things that are potentially out there like the universal DH. I, I, you know, some people like it, some people don't, I like the two different styles of baseball, but you know, throw it against the wall in 2020, see what sticks and then move on uh, in the future. Got anything cool in the office there? Is that your office? No, I'm in a Airbnb in uh, Denver, Colorado. (laughs) I don't, I don't, I'm scared to open drawers in an Airbnb. I don't, I don't want to know what's in there. I don't know whose hair is hanging out on the floor right now. It's certainly not mine. I do not have long black hair. I don't know if you know that, but there's a pile of long black hair in the corner of my room. And, and uh, it's, it's whoever was here last. Boy, maybe Troy Palomalu was there. (laughs) <laughs> it does smell like head and shoulders in there. Uh, you're working with Michelob Ultra, and uh, you you launched the hashtag Ultra Buck Calls. And I know that you had some fun with this, and then, you know, that people would send videos, and then you would do play-by-play, and then all of a sudden people yeah. sent you porn and then said, do, yes. do play-by-play. Then I got an offer. Then I got an offer to, to change directions entirely in my career and actually – do live play-by-play for the visually impaired that was in the contract for webcam porn. I don't know if you call it a video, just webcam porn. So yeah, I, I, I thought about it. Uh, and then I asked my mom and she's like, either pick your relationship with me or go ahead and do that. <laughs> and I, I picked my relationship with my mom. And your dad never got that offer. I'm guessing. I don't think he did, but I think a grovelly voice, you know, uh, let's take a look and see what's <laughs> happening in uh, bedroom number four. I think yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know. How. I think the call. I don't believe what I just saw. <laughs> it's gonna be a mm. go crazy, folks. <laughs> go crazy. Um, explain uh, this contest you're doing with uh, Michelob Ultra. Yeah, it, it's kind of a take on what we did at the beginning of the pandemic in, in this shelter in place, which. Last time I checked, had over 10 million views, and it was just play-by-play of people doing stuff around the house. Now, that could be, you know, cooking chicken wings on a barbecue grill. That could be playing with the dog. That could be some ridiculous shot. That could be people on a lake messing around and doing some trick 
uh, surfing or whatever. I've seen it all. And uh, I put my play by play to it. And uh, on August 1st, the contest ends. And then I will we'll put four of them back on the internet that uh, makes people famous and something they're showing their friends and family for the rest of time. But so you have all the videos there. You've already done them. And then I've done some. I'm going to do more, I think, uh, Monday. So I, I, it's the contest is open till August 1st. But I, I've seen a lot of them. Uh, some I, the, the bottom line is when people clear out their living room and make a makeshift hoop out of an old Adidas box and play two on two hoops. That's fun. And, and I'm happy to do play by play to that. Uh, they're, they're, people are creative. As you know, we both know from what they send in on social media or whatever. So this is just tapping into that. What's your NFL schedule? What have you been told? So far, uh, you know, I, I think that obviously the preseason game that we had scheduled is gone. But uh, we open up with Tampa Bay and Tom Brady at Drew Brees and the Saints the first weekend on a Sunday. And it's a lot of Brady early and it's a lot of Cowboys late. And I'm hoping like crazy that we're there at the stadiums doing these games. But I don't know anything more than any fan does and and i i think until we get around to it and these guys open camp and we see how it goes with this uh you know it, it's all speculation but i haven't heard anything to tell me i'm not going to be there on the first weekend of the season i'm wondering if we have fans at a baseball game uh before we have fans at a football game like do you see that like nascar tested it out at bristol motor speedway and they were able to get what twenty thousand in there but could you see baseball as a possibility or or the fact that these football stadiums are a, a lot of these have a little bit more room there for these fans yeah i i think it's all on the board i i would not be surprised if if the you know the the flattening of the curve happens it certainly doesn't seem because of these you know outbreaks in these hot uh hot cities that we keep hearing about uh and states really if, if this is really in, in the near future, I, I think kind of leaving it where it is right now and let everybody take a breath and see where this goes is the best idea. But yeah, I could see before the end of the season, their fans socially distance in the ballparks. Um, hopefully the experience is so unbelievable on TV that, uh, <laughs> that it's, <laughs> we don't have to worry yeah. about that. Uh, it's great to talk to you. Hope the uh, the kids are good there, Joe, and uh, yes. everybody's healthy. So uh, yeah, the old six a.m. wake up call for the fifty one year old dad of two year old twin boys. What were you thinking? Yes, sir. What were you thinking? My wife is so tired of of me saying, you know, I've already done this, <laughs> or uh, I'm too old for this. I'm like Riggs or Murtaugh, who whichever one said that. I'm getting too old for this. I am too old for this, but it's awesome. It's great. But the mornings are really hard for me. And it's always, it, 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 there's a um, an ability to act like you don't hear them crying that you, oh. that you learn as a parent. Uh, but, you know, my wife would just nudge me. Like it is, I heard if, you know, my son or daughters were crying. It wasn't one of those, uh, what? I didn't hear that. I just yeah. get the nudge. Hey, you go get them and it'd be two in the morning. Right. So I don't know if you've no. mastered that or your wife can see right through that. No, she sees right, but she sleeps through everything. She, she slept through me leaving in the middle of the night to go egg Todd's house last <laughs> night. Didn't even know that I left. But I, I wake up at everything. I, I, if I hear one thing, I'm wide awake. So she knows I hear it. Yeah. Um, Todd, anything else you want to say to Joe? Just to kind of maybe yeah. say anything you want me to tell Michelle? <laughs> yeah. Todd? Um, say hi to Michelle. I sincerely apologize okay. that the way I stored the numbers when I'm trying to contact you, either she's getting it or you're both getting it, but it's a, uh, no, it was, I don't get any of these. <laughs> she just flips them over to me for, for the for screenshots the, for the record. It's, it was an innocent mistake and I hope we're still pals and there's no, nothing untoward about. <laughs> do you my think I, career. do you think I care? Do you think I really care? Todd? I don't do you think know you me do. well enough. Okay. Your, your personality is such that Todd, you're you sound that. guilty, man. Well, if you check the text, they're all about, Joe, we'd like to have you on Thursday. I don't know what's... Well, no, uh, I will say this, Joe. If he knew it was your wife, that. then it then I would have worried because then the messages would have been yeah. different. Well, wasn't she once a no, Broncos cheerleader? Yeah, I'm a big Denver Broncos fan. <laughs> so I guess... See, well, there you go. You know, there you, you go. I want to connect the dots. I don't want to you know, Todd, incriminate right. myself. You just did. I am a big Broncos fan. I'll leave it at that. Cut, cut Todd's mic off. 
God. Yeah. 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 I'd I will. Uh, yeah. Just pass. We still have the chaps. We still have the chaps. That's all I'm going to say. Todd. Wow. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. That's Joe Buck. Uh, Nationals Yankees Saturday night at seven Eastern on Fox. 